That's the essential right upon which all other rights depend. If you can't defend yourself, you can't defend your family and your property, you don't have any rights at all. What the holy crap? And this video right here is called I'm Exposing the Whole Damn Thing. We about to check out a little bit of this, just a little bit. Mm, pokey don't, mm, pokey don't. In this country, we have more firearms in civilian hands than we have civilian hands. That's true, that's Imagine true. Imagine a system where the person who's been charged is no longer allowed to defend himself. Uh, that system but exists. But if you're talking about rights, you at some point want to identify the most basic human right of all. What is that? Well, of course, it's the right of self-defense. That's the essential right upon which all other rights depend. If you can't defend yourself, you can't defend your family and your property, you don't have any rights at all. You're a slave by definition. So you may be Thanks. wondering in this moment of creeping authoritarianism, how is the right to self-defense doing in our country? Self-defense, the cornerstone of all freedoms, without which you cannot be free, you are owned. Self-defense is becoming illegal, in effect. It is, and the guy that he was just now showing was a gentleman who owned a bodega in, in New York, I believe, or was it in Philly? The young guy came in there with his girlfriend, and he went back there, the, the, the young guy, decided to go behind the counter to the register and try to take whatever he wanted from the guy. And they started fighting right there behind the register. And the owner ended up, I guess, killing that dude. And the owner got charged for protecting himself. Imagine that. You can't even protect yourself in your own business. When somebody violates you, there's two things that they do not want. The two things they don't want is to be arrested or to die. And they will do whatever they can to make sure neither of those things happen to them. That means if they have to kill you to make sure that they aren't arrested or that they don't, they're not killed first, they will do it. So we must make sure we are vigilant. We got to make sure we are on point at all times. In a lot of places. And not just in very liberal places, like New York City. Even in states with some of the strongest self-defense laws on the books. Arizona, for example, allows residents to shoot trespassers on their property. The fact that so many Americans have a firearm within reach but never commit violence tells you that guns are not the problem. Most people in this country can be trusted with an AR-15, just as we can be trusted with cars and light aircraft and electricity and baseball bats and insecticide and chainsaws and pruning shears and countless other objects that could easily double as weapons. That's right. You say school teachers don't want to have guns inside of their classrooms, but they have scissors where they can stab the hell out of somebody. They have other blunt instruments that they can bust somebody over the head but yet they don't want to have a gun for political purposes, for political purposes. So now this very same system, the system that imprisoned Jose Alba and chained Musa Diarra to his hospital bed, this Soros inspired and backed system, is putting Joe Biden's main political opponent in the upcoming presidential race on trial for a crime that's not actually a crime. This is the political tyranny part of anarcho tyranny. And that sucks, man, just for the sake of achieving some political points you're willing to break the law and arrest someone who's your opponent your biggest opponent just to get them out of the way and a lot of people are actually praising this all over the internet yeah they indicted him they said he wouldn't go to jail i'm so glad he's going to jail all because of the lies that they're feeding him on that side they're receiving no truths from the opposite side at all they don't want to. They don't want to hear it. La, 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 la. Don't tell me that my father molested people. La, 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 la. Don't tell me that my mother was a hooker. La, 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 la. Don't tell me that my family on drugs. I don't want to hear it. Only tell me the good stuff. At about 5 a.m. on Saturday morning in Manhattan, a parking garage attendant called Musa Diara noticed a man peering into parked cars looking for things to steal. Now, that's a familiar scene in New York City. Alvin Bragg, who is the local Soros-funded DA, has decided that prosecuting car burglaries is a form of white supremacy. As a result, not surprisingly, car burglaries have risen quite a bit. Musa Diaria, the attendant, is not white, but apparently he's sick of watching other people get robbed, so he told the man to get out, leave the garage. In response, the man pulled out a handgun and fired four times. He hit Diaria in the head and the stomach. It was a nightmare. But somehow, Musa Diaria had the presence of mind to wrestle the gun from the man and then fire back before the man could shoot him.
him or anyone else. By the time police arrived, both men were lying on the sidewalk bleeding. Now, what do you think happened next? In a sane, self-respecting society, Musa Diaria would have received a medal, if not a ticker tape parade. But in the city of New York, he was arrested and charged with attempted murder and illegal possession of a gun, the same gun that had been used to shoot him. Come on, bro. That's BS, man. So you mean to tell me that this dude tried to shoot me? He, matter of fact, he did shoot me a couple of times. He shot me a couple of times. And because I didn't lay down and die and instead fought him back and won, I'm the one that get, uh, get arrested? Where they do that at? I know that people don't say where they do that at, at anymore, but right now I think it's I think it fits. I think it fits the situation. Where the hell do they do that at? Or as the new saying is, that's well, it's not a new saying that's going out to, the math just ain't mathing. It's not adding up. Please tell me how in the hell am I arrested and that dude tried to kill me, but he ended up dying. I won. The gun is even registered to him. What part of me defending myself was breaking the law? I don't get that. See, that's that type of red tape that make people not even want to have guns. That's this bull sugar honey iced tea right there because people are seeing this. People are saying, no, if I see, they trying to set us up. If I end up shooting somebody that come in my house, they just trying to arrest me. Then there's another black man who's no longer in his home. Dara woke up in Bellevue Hospital shackled to his bed. The New York Post ran this picture. It's of him sobbing. I got bullets in me and I'm chained to a hospital bed, he said, but I didn't do anything wrong. You can imagine his confusion. This was not the country he expected. And in fact, Musa Dayara is exactly the kind of person you want more of in your country. He's 57 years old and he's still working harder than most young people do. The man who shot him, by contrast, does not have a history of going to work every day. His name is Charles Rohde. We checked. He's got a rap sheet of nearly a dozen serious crimes that go back more than 20 years. And yet, as of Saturday at 5 a.m., he was not in jail. He was walking around New York with a gun looking for more things to steal. And he was white and he shot a black dude and he ended up. Come on, bro. Here's the thing, man. When the black dude shoot and kill the white dude, nobody's saying anything about racism. I'm not hearing anything about 1619. None of that. So for our existing legal system, this appears to be a point of no return. And you would think the media would point that out. Even if they support it, this is a big change from the way the country has run for hundreds of years. But no, because they're too dumb, too shallow, and above all, too self-interested. So I love the way he put his stories down, man. He let y'all know exactly what it is. And now people are butt hurt because they're like, bro, I thought you were on our side. No, I'm on the side of truth. And if you're not on the side of truth, then I'm not on your side. I wasn't on your side as far as echo chamber side or say whatever appeases you side or say whatever makes you moist side. Nah, I'm not trying to turn you on with my rhetoric. I'm, I'm actually out here reporting the truth. And if you're on that side, yeah, we together, we rock. If we not, then it is what it is. You know, go your merry way. So Trump's upcoming arraignment tomorrow isn't a turning point in our country's legal system. It's yet another chance to follow Trump around in the hope that ratings will return. Well, it is a big deal, actually. It's a very, very big deal, but the guardrails are gone. No one in the media seems to be pointing out that this is a huge change in our entire legal system. And no one in the Democratic Party in Washington, even those who are a little bit concerned about where this might be heading, dare say anything at all because Alvin Bragg is, of course, a holy person and no one wants to speak out against the crowd on Twitter. So this is all happening in slow motion. And of course, we're getting the dumbest possible lectures, as always, from cable news. We've learned not to put everything at 11. We're not making everything the biggest deal. It's hilarious. And of course, they can't wait to make it the biggest deal on the shallowest possible level. And the reason is economic. Since Trump left office, CNN has lost more than 60 percent of its viewers. They're desperately trying to sell the channel because, like, it's tanking. That is so true. I remember probably like six months ago. <laughs> six months ago, I think Trump stopped doing videos and stopped talking for a long time. And CNN was hurting. They was hurting. And the next thing you know, Trump popped up and said he started doing um, events. He started talking places. 
And CNN had a party. They was like, oh, my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We see Trump doing more speeches. And guess what? They started reporting on them speeches. They started hoping that he would say more. They started gaslighting, saying things, saying, okay, since he's back in the public, we're going to gaslight him. We're going to say something to make him bark back. And then we're going to take whatever that barking back is. We're going to flip it and have another Trump show and boost our rating some more because they are playing the algorithm game baby they rolling dice man they like ah trump ha we won again ah trump ha we won again ah trump ah we won again they love it when trump is saying something they love it now let's get him arrested that would be even better can we do that can we legally do that can we find someone that got maybe a horse face and some big titties that will probably say that you know that will go back to court forms and start this whole thing over because i remember two years ago when we did that it, we was getting a lot of ratings when horse face was in so bring horse face back what else can we bring back what else can we bring back what else can we bring back it's crazy so they have every incentive to sensationalize anything that Trump does, no matter what happens to the country in the process. So here you have a Soros-funded DA perp-walking a former president. What does this mean? What could Trump possibly be guilty of? <laughs> they don't even tell you. All they tell their eager but small audience is, the walls are closing in on career criminal Donald Trump. Yep. They're going to turn Trump's motorcade into OJ's Bronco because otherwise they're going to be out of a job because nobody watches them anymore. Imagine a system where the person who's been charged is no longer allowed to defend himself. Oh, are you seeing the connection here? The person that's being charged is no longer allowed to defend themselves. That's exactly what's happening. They just, it's just like a shut up and take it type of thing. Like the parking garage attendant who was shot by a criminal, he gets arrested. Like Jose Alba, who tried to save his own life from a lunatic in his bodega, he gets arrested. Mm. The people who are the victims of the tyranny don't get to speak. CNN speaks for them. Imagine that. There are multiple reports tonight that Alvin Bragg's office will seek a gag order when Trump is arraigned. Now, that would prevent Trump, on pain of going to prison, from talking about his case in public. But yep. CNN yep. and MSNBC and the New York Times and the Washington Post, all the completely filthy, corrupt liars in the media, handmaidens to power, they'll be able to say whatever they want. How in the hell are you gonna give me a gag order on not to talk about it? I, what? I'm the victim. You can't tell me what the hell to talk about what I, you know, what I can't talk about. I'm gonna talk about whatever the hell I wanna talk about. I'm gonna say, oh, you got a gag order. You can't go out there and talk about it. Mm-hmm. You can't defend me. You're, no public opinion because we know we already know that the left gives everything to public opinion. Everything is public opinion. If, 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 if public opinion is bigger than the Constitution, so be it. That's the new rule for us. If public opinion is bigger than scripture in the Bible, so be it. There are now 15,000 genders. And it's possible you've heard an advocate for gun control say that in this country, we have more firearms in civilian hands then we have civilian hand. And that is true, actually. The total American population is about 332 million people, and collectively they own more than 400 million firearms. Whew. About half of all U.S. households have at least one gun at home, and many have much more than that. Plus they have ammo, billions and billions of rounds of it. Those are all real numbers, but they are hardly an argument for gun control. They're an argument, in fact, against it. Ask yourself, what would it require to confiscate all those guns and all that ammunition and turn the United States into a disarmed nation like Turkmenistan or North Korea? Well, it would take a police state and it would end in civil war. It would end in, in civil war. What would happen is they're going to get a lot of blue states to be for this mess. A lot of blue states will be for it. It would be so many people for it in blue states that um, it would become law. And if it become law in too many states, they're going to start making law everywhere else. When you normalize a thing, no matter how ridiculous, it becomes easier to normalize another ridiculous thing. No sane person wants either one of those things. But thankfully, we don't need them. In the late 19th century, researchers finally decided that infection is spread by germs. And as a result of that conclusion, surgeons are now required to wash their hands before they cut you open. Everybody agrees that this is progress. But what if we had refused to learn how infection is spread? What if we just didn't want to know? 
Well, appendectomies would still be fatal, and we would be a backward, ridiculous, uncaring people. It's impossible even to imagine that. And yet, on the question of violent crime, of murder, it's very easy to imagine that because it's happening. Our leaders are determined not to know why people shoot each other, and they don't want us to know either. They're adamant that we do not ask questions about motive. You can't ask questions about anything. You can't say, why did they arrest the Jan 6 people, but they ain't arrested the, the, the Black Lives Matter people who was actually burning down stuff and, and a couple of people got murdered and tr um, cars was being turned over and burned up and, and, and all this other stuff and they were stealing out of stores. You can't, you can't ask that either? What is a woman? I, I can't answer that either. How many genders is it? Ah, I can't answer that. I can't ask that either. So many things you can't ask anymore. It seems, for example, like an awful lot of mass shooters have taken prescription psychiatric drugs in the days before they opened fire and killed others. Have you noticed that? Maybe you have noticed that. Good luck saying it in public. You'll be shouted down immediately by someone with an advanced degree. How dare you criticize Big Pharma? What are you, a conspiracy nut? No, actually you're not. You're someone who cares about cause and effect. You're a rational person. The only conspiracy here is the one to design to prevent you from figuring out why mass shootings keep happening. That's right, that's 1000% true. Someone just now said something that's, that, that just opened my eyes in another way to Chris and Susie, I, don't know, I think that's Chris. He said, every time we agree to any law being enforced by the federal government, we give away a little more of our freedom and we keep letting it happen. And he is absolutely right because they convince so many people that it's a good thing to give away this right. Like they're doing with guns right now. They are convinced and they are on a campaign right now and to say guns are bad. Guns are bad. It wasn't because of the person. It was because of the gun. Guns are bad. We shouldn't have guns. Police should only have guns. Military should only have guns. If they keep on saying this over and over and over again, they are, they are getting into the psyche of a lot of people and a lot of people are cool with not having weapons in their house, not having guns in their house. And it's going to become law. It's already happening in Canada. It's already happening in other places. It's about to happen here. And when you try to speak up for freedom, when you try to speak up for the Constitution, when you try to say Second Amendment, they will call you privileged. They will say that you are privileged. And that you want things to stay the old ways because the old ways was controlling. The old ways, um, black people had no rights and women had no rights. You want it to stay the old way so that you can continue to run everything white man because that's the only person that want things. It's, it's so damn ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. You want things to be the old way. They've Not only are they making the word gun bad but they're making the word constitution bad they're making the word bible and god bad they're making the word america bad everything that's good they're making it bad and they're doing it for a reason so that they can be able to control the narrative popular that's why they want it to be the popular vote they want it to be about popularity they want it to be about the masses how many people can we get to agree with this? If we can get a, if we can get many, many, many people to agree with this, then what's written as law can be changed, baby. Let's go ahead and change it. We just need y'all to get out there and make some noise. Go make some noise. Go make some noise. You know, go. If you see somebody speaking about some truth somewhere, you go to that university and you make some noise. You you give them hell. You let them know that you don't want them there talking all this truth. Shut up. Don't talk no truth in my university. We don't want none of that. It's crazy, man. Um, I'm going to leave the link below for this right here.